If you are new to Stream Deck, maybe you've heard about Stream Deck and want to know what all the fuss is about, then this introductory video is for you. Hello and welcome to Take One Tech, my name's Alec and uh, in this video it's really going to serve as the first in a series of videos I'm making which is uh, re really a total guide to Stream Deck from uh, beginner all the way through to advanced and what I thought I'd do is for those that are unaware just uh, have this initial video to give you an introduction to Stream Deck, exactly what it does, uh, or in broad terms what it does, uh, the different models that are available and so on so that you get more of an idea of what we're talking about. Then in the next video in the series I'll go into some uh, setup steps that you can take with your Stream Deck and how to actually start using it for uh, your productivity in your daily workflow uh, and then we'll move on to other videos tackling slightly more advanced options all the way through to sort of power user <laughs> uh, uses for Stream Deck where you're linking into uh, things such as uh, Keyboard Maestro and so on to run macros and all kinds of other advanced things on your uh, Mac but I don't want to scare you off at the moment this is at the end of the day the uh, very first step so let me go straight on into showing you the Stream Deck and exactly what it is so if I come into my little top-down shot the Stream Deck is a uh, device which connects to your computer uh, over USB and it's basically a series of buttons and if I just pull my keyboard into the shot you can see uh, how big it is compared to a keyboard so the keys themselves the buttons on the stream deck are basically around about the same size maybe slightly bigger than a standard key on a keyboard uh, but then they're slightly further spaced apart it actually sits on your desk it's slightly raised so it's a bit thicker then, uh, well quite a bit thicker actually than the uh, standard uh, keyboard or the Apple keyboard and then it also comes reaching out for it it comes with this sort of riser as well uh, so and it just clips on with magnets so that when it sits on the desk you can have it so that it sits in a more sort of uh, slightly elevated position so that you can uh, see the buttons more clearly and uh, and press them but I'll take it off the stand just for the moment for the purposes of this demonstration now you'll notice that all of these uh, buttons have quite uh, pretty little pictures on them. Well, the amazing thing, <laughs> or the thing that amazed me about it, is that all of these buttons in themselves, each one is an individual screen. And if I uh, just press this button, I can go to a whole different set of keys. And uh, there all of the buttons change again and I could go into a different set of buttons and so on and you can see that these buttons are all uh, changing the little icons on them and actually changing the, the, the actions that you can do with these buttons based on the context that you're in or the profile that you're in but uh, I'm getting a little bit ahead here so what does Stream Deck actually do? Well basically it is a, a control device for your computer you can use it to trigger things that you would normally do with uh, keyboard shortcuts so for example you could create a little copy and paste button uh, which would mimic the keystroke of control uh, command C or command V uh, to copy and paste and anything that you can do with keystrokes on your uh, Mac or PC then you can mimic that with Stream Deck but you can also do some more advanced things so there are applications that have built-in controls into Stream Deck that have actually uh, developed the buttons and the commands so you can have custom commands specific to your applications but we'll get into that and as I said in the little intro you can also link this into macros so basically anything you can do with macros on your computer you could do with a single push of a button. So why would you want something like this over keyboard shortcuts when we're all used to pressing command C for copy and paste and so on? Well it depends what you're actually doing on your computer. For me if I am doing something where I've got my hands on the keyboard then keyboard shortcuts are still the thing that I use because I've got that muscle memory built in to just reach across and do them. But what if you're doing something on your mouse where you want to press I don't know command P or something like that and you don't want to be uh, you can't reach across to uh, from the, the position that you're in. Sometimes, uh, depending on what workflow you're in, it is actually easier to just have your mouse and your Stream Deck and be able to control everything from there. So that's a very brief introduction into what it is but let me tell you a little bit about the models that are available because there are actually three models available. This one that I have at the moment is the XL version which has 32 keys and is the biggest version that you can get at the moment. Uh, I'm waiting for something bigger because <laughs> I find that you can never have too many keys on a stream deck. If I just uh, organize my 
window for you I can show you uh, in fact this is a good example I'm actually using this to control my Ecamm Live so here I have my different views I've got my top-down view active at the moment if I want to flick over to share my desktop I just press this button and then that is going to switch over to my desktop view so uh, that is how I'm using the Stream Deck to control my Ecamm Live which is the software I use to make all of these videos uh, that's perhaps a good segue to say if you are interested in making videos <laughs> uh, and making YouTube videos or for live streaming or producing content for uh, video production, be it making course material or whatever it might be, then I can highly recommend Ecamm Live. It's a uh, great piece of software. It's Mac only, um, but it is a really good sort of live production environment. If you've heard of something called OBS, Open Broadcast Software, then it's uh, similar to that in that it achieves the same goal. However, personally, I find it a lot more user-friendly and it's a really uh, solid piece of software that's not open source. It's developed by uh, real developers who are uh, striving to make it better and better every day. And... Given that it is now the 2nd of July, <laughs> 2021, uh, for the whole month of July, you can actually get 30% off the uh, subscription for Ecamm Live. So just go over to takeonetech.io slash Ecamm and uh, you can get a free trial there. And then if you sign up after that, then you'll get the 30% uh, discount. Uh, that's only in the month of July. And I can highly recommend it. Uh, as I say, I'm at least what I use to make all of these videos. But I digress. Let me get back to the Stream Deck for a moment. Uh, the Stream Deck, so this is the Excel version. And at the moment, in uh, it, the retail price is $250. The original version is uh, the 15 key, so the Stream Deck. Uh, that is $125 at the moment. And there is also a little baby Stream Deck for uh, $80. And that's just got six keys the differentiating, uh, differentiating factors between them, the uh, 32 key has this sort of magnetic solid stand that I uh, showed you and the 6 key also has a similar stand as well. The 15 key, the original version, has a, a stand whoops a daisy, I've gone off the wrong to a different picture, there we go the uh, 16 version, wherever it's gone uh, clicking around, uh, it's not coming up now, one second there we go. It uh, was having to think about that for a moment there. In fact, it's just gone off it again. <laughs> Not sure quite what's happened there. So there we go. This is the uh, the original version and it's on this, uh, I would say, slightly more flimsy uh, stand. Uh, it is adjustable though, but I just feel that having felt them both that the uh, 32 key is certainly a more solid. I'm sure at some point they'll update this one to have a more uh, rugged stand on it as well. Uh, another differentiating factor between the uh, the three models, the 32 key actually has a detachable uh, USB cable uh, and it's got USB-C that plugs into the Stream Deck where, and on the other end is a USB 3 uh, uh, plug. So uh, that is detachable though and it's a really actually it's a really nice sort of braided, uh, braided cable. Um, now what I would recommend is if you are considering getting a Stream Deck personally I don't think that it's worth <laughs> considering the six key one. If you don't have the budget to go to one of the uh, larger models, that's totally understandable because they're certainly not inexpensive. Um, I would recommend trying out the mobile version because the mobile version of the uh, Stream Deck app actually has uh, 15 keys and you can run it on a mobile. And I don't know if you're like me and got sort of old mobile phones lying around, but I actually run it on an old uh, iPhone 5 SE or SX, whichever it was, I can't remember now, it's that long ago, uh, but it runs just fine on this and I actually just use this, I've got a little stand and I can use this in addition to my other one when I do need those few extra buttons. And that is a, a free trial of the app. I did a whole video about the uh, mobile app, so I'll leave a link to that in the top corner and in the description as well. And uh, yeah, it's a great way to just sort of try out Stream Deck and figure it out if you need it. And I think that uh, a lot of people get the smaller version and then when they're thinking that they have a use case for it and then when they actually get the device they realize how many more uses it's got and they just wish they had those few uh, extra buttons so uh, certainly my recommendation would be either the 15 or the 32 uh, or if not then the mobile app because yes I think the mobile app is three dollars a month something like that so you could have uh, several years worth of uh, usage of that app for the same price as the six key and yet you'd still be getting the 15 keys on the mobile 
You can't really beat the sort of tactile feel though of the actual device. So uh, yeah, you might find yourself quickly, <laughs> as I did, I got the mobile app and I tried it for uh, literally a day or two days and then I went straight ahead and bought the other version because I could see the uh, the use the use cases that I could have for it. So those are the different uh, models available. Now what I'll do is I'll give you a little introduction to uh, how the software works uh, to uh, set it all up and then in terms of actually going through the process of setting it up I'll leave that for the next video which I'll queue up next in the uh, in this playlist so this will be part of the Stream Deck playlist and I'll go in and order it all nicely so that anybody joining the playlist can skip forwards and backwards and progress through all the videos. So let me just move this out of the way and we should come into my Stream Deck profile. Now, in fact, if I just switch over to a slightly different view, then what we can see uh, is, here we go, I've got the Stream Deck here. Uh, let me just see if I can maybe zoom in a little bit. One second. Right, this is the way to zoom in. I'll just lift it higher. <laughs> I'm actually maximum got maximum zoom on there. So what I'm hoping that you could see is that what is on the screen above is uh, what is on my, as you can see on the the uh, the app, and what is on my screen uh, above is actually mimicking exactly what is on my Stream Deck. So this is the application that you use to set up all of these buttons, to set up all the icons, and then it's what you use to program all of the actions and things like that. So uh, let me just, uh, just so that you can understand what you're looking at, I'll come back into my actual uh, application. So this is the Stream Deck app. Uh, when you download it, what uh, you'll find is it will sit in your menu bar. So it will just sit up there if you're on a Mac. If you're on a PC, I believe it is a standalone application. I've never actually used it on a PC. I'm a Mac user. So uh, I'm sorry I can't give you some fuller details on the installation process or anything like that with that because, as I say, I only use uh, Macs. Uh, however, I do believe that the application looks pretty much the same and the, the functionality that you can do with it is the, uh, the, the same. It's just a difference in the way you install install it and obviously where it sits so it doesn't you don't obviously don't have a menu bar so uh, one thing that it will ask you to do during installation on a mac is it will prompt you and it will open up the uh, system preferences and the security and privacy section and there'll be a part in here that you're going to need to grant access to uh, which i believe is uh, one second uh, input monitoring and down here somewhere we should have uh, is it input monitoring? <laughs> he says it is one of these. There we go. Uh, if I just unclick that to unlock it, as I say, you'll be prompted to do all this, but I just don't want you to feel that it's uh, taking you by surprise and you're not sure what it's asking you to do when it's asking you to go into your security and privacy settings, but it's asking for full disk access. And that is to be able to control different things on your, uh, your Mac. So somewhere in here, it has popped in a stream deck. So this, this may be already in there once you go through the installation process, but you just need to tick that to make sure it's got access. And uh, maybe even it might be in here, I think as well. Uh, but it, as I say, when you go through the process, there it is, yeah, files and folders. So when you go through the installation process, it will prompt you to open these things and uh, just check them. So just to let you know that that is uh, totally normal and to be expected. So I'm not going to go into programming all these buttons in this video. I'm just showing you the interface and how that this maps to what is on the screen. What I want to do here is I want to just briefly touch on uh, part of the installation and things that you may want to do. Or if you've already got a Stream Deck and you uh, maybe haven't used it for a while and uh, you're just sort of getting back into it, then uh, just come over to this little cogwheel at the top. And what you'll see in here, if it's opened up on my other monitor, that would be helpful. So here in the general settings, we've got uh, a few things. So first of all, you want to just come to this uh, software version and just click check for updates. Uh, if you see uh, the, uh, that it's got uh, less than a five before it, you definitely want to check for updates because the latest software version uh, as of uh, July the 2nd 2021 is version 5 so just click on that check for updates and then it would just quickly do a check to see if you've got the latest version uh, the software version 5 was a major update from uh, the previous release and it was only released I think two weeks ago or something like that I did actually do a video on the day of release about the uh, version 5 
uh, update and what the new features were. So if you are if you have been using Stream Deck, then you may want to check that out. I'll obviously leave a link in the top and in the description as well. But yeah, just make sure you've done that. Firmware is sort of like the uh, uh, the programming that controls the device itself actually stored on the device. Uh, now at the moment there's uh, just says fir firmware version here but sometimes if you, the firmware does need to be updated there'll be a little button here that says uh, update firmware so do make sure that you check that and uh, sort of check here periodically as well to see if your firmware does need to be updated. Sometimes with software updates the firmware will need to be updated as well just to run the same uh, to be able to run the software so just bear that in mind. Here we've got a device name where you can change the name of your device. So at the moment I've just left it as it is, Stream Deck XL. Uh, I'm thinking about getting a second one, so I might have Stream Deck XL 1 and 2. Uh, but there you go. You can also program it to go to sleep uh, in terms of switch off all the buttons. I personally uh, don't do that, uh, but the, you can actually assign that to a button on Stream Deck as well but we'll come to that uh, screensaver so you can have it so that there is a screensaver that runs on the, uh, the across the buttons as well so you don't have them sitting uh, static with the same image you get obviously the same issue with the uh, screen burning on these buttons as you might do with the monitor although these days with modern screens i don't think it's as big as an issue as it used to be with the old uh, uh, old style uh, monitors but anyway you also have the option to change the brightness of the buttons. If I just flip back into my uh, top-down mode, then you can see that I'm changing the brightness. Uh, I actually normally, when I'm using it normally, I would have it uh, more like maximum brightness. But for the purposes of this video, I think the buttons do show up slightly better when I've turned the brightness down. But they are a little bit dim for me on that setting, so I tend to just have them on maximum brightness. Uh, so that is the sort of general settings. Uh, next we want to go to the uh, account section this you can basically skip this potentially when you're first setting it up uh, bear in mind that a stream deck the clue is in the title <laughs> was originally designed for and by uh, live streamers and so it was for doing similar sorts of things that I'm doing really switching between different scenes and things like that different actions when you're live streaming uh, but it's used for far more than just that these days uh, however this is where you would link it to your uh, YouTube account maybe your Twitch account your uh, Streamlabs which is another stream streaming related service and uh, your Twitter account you don't have to do that to use it with any of those services but as you'll see in another video where I talk about some of the uh, the plugins you can get plugins for YouTube and Twitch and so on that uh, you can trigger different actions so that is why you would need those to be logged in there but when you first set it up it's not uh, not necessary the next section is uh, profiles now I'll uh, I'll come on to that in a little while in probably another video because this is where you can set up these different screens depending on the uh, use cases so where you saw me show you before in fact, if I come back to my uh, top-down shot there we go get the right shot uh, where this this sort of home screen if you like this first one or this one <laughs> this home screen is one profile and then I have a profile for when I'm recording and it has a different set of uh, buttons and then I have profiles for different work uh, related tasks and things like that so uh, just to show you exactly what these buttons are uh, or rather give you a an overview of how I'm using it if I can get back to my screen sharing uh, let me move this one out of the way. Uh, so basically, if I come to my home screen, uh, along the top I've got uh, this one puts my computer to sleep, switches things off that need to be shut down and so on. Uh, this one toggles my uh, headphones between either my headphones or my uh, sort of speakers that I have that are part of my monitor. So I can click that button and it will switch between the two, switch the output of my computer between the two. I can mute the computer, I can volume up and down. Uh, this one switches my keyboard and mouse control over to my uh, phone or my iPad. Uh, and then this one, I use these ones to switch back and forwards between spaces. Again, you can do this by the default, I think is command left and right arrow. If, you've, if you use spaces on a Mac to switch between them. Uh, but as I say, I just have this because I'm often flicking between different uh, things. So I just have them as little arrows there. The next row is basically, uh, these are all Think of them as sort of like mind sets. <laughs> so these are all the things that I use for my recording, uh, for my live streaming for this channel, or for Zoom calls that I have related to this channel. Uh, this one is for everything to do with my uh, podcast when I'm recording my podcast. Uh, and then these four here are for four different companies I'm involved in. And so they are just all the tools and things that I need relating to those. 
This next row, the way I have it set up, these are all related to specific applications. Uh, so I've got, uh, this is actually a desktop calculator. I did a, uh, a video about that, which I'll link to how you can make a little desktop calculator out of it. But then these other ones are actually applications or are actually applications. Uh, <laughs> I'll try that for a third time. <laughs> are actions relating to specific applications. So for example, my OmniFocus here has got all of the uh, keys that I use with, uh, with OmniFocus. Uh, and so on for different applications and then down here at the bottom are just some little uh, things for like emojis to save me going to the emoji picker and this one for commonly used files and folders on my computer a link to that system preferences and this one for dictation so that is basically my uh, home uh, uh, he says, trying to think for the word, uh, my home profile. I had a complete mind blank there for a moment. <laughs> That's my home profile. And each of those other ones that I've just shown you is a, another profile. So uh, as I say, I'm going to go into how to set all this up. Uh, but this is where you can see all of those profiles in the settings. So that is a very brief introduction to uh, Stream Deck and what it is. I've shown you the hardware, I've shown you the different versions of uh, the hardware that you can get and I've given you a bit of an insight into the way that I'm using it. So I didn't want to do a massive long uh, video of uh, lasting for uh, uh, hours <laughs> all about setting up the Stream Deck so that's why I've split it into different uh, different subsections uh, as I've done here. So uh, what I'll do is I'll uh, upload the other videos and then those will all feature in a playlist which will uh, lead on to the next step where I'll talk about basically how you can add these actions in and in fact just to give you a little sneak peek just in case you can't wait for the next video. <laughs> all of these uh, sections down the uh, right hand side, it would help if I actually highlighted the screen rather than my preview window, uh, this is where we can add on different actions so we can create uh, a little uh, keystrokes and things like that or we can add links to applications and things and we can do all of that in these sections but I'll save that for the next video. If you found this brief introduction video useful then please don't forget to go and like and subscribe to the channel it really does help the channel uh, to reach a wider audience and I'm trying to make all of the videos that I make as helpful as possible and share as much knowledge as I possibly can and uh, also share my mistakes <laughs> because I often think we learn a lot from our mistakes and learn more from our mistakes probably than the things we're doing right so uh, you can learn from my mistakes because I've certainly made a few I've made a few in just this video alone <laughs> so uh, until until the next video, uh, don't go anywhere because there are more videos coming up next on screen and uh, I'll leave a link to the uh, Stream Deck playlist at the bottom right there so that was where you'll find all other Stream Deck related material. Have a great day.